Hello beings! So first I want to address, when I start my videos, I intentionally do not introduce myself. And I've gotten a lot of questions actually as to why I don't introduce myself and why I don't start all of my videos the same way. Because it's a great branding aspect to start all of your videos the same way. Um, just where I am right now, uh, in my phase of creating YouTube videos, it's more therapeutic for me. Uh, it's a little bit less about branding myself and more about just sharing my opinions and um, sharing topics that I'm passionate about and being able to talk to a screen, a blank screen, a camera, a lens, and just express how I feel and then in the comfort of my own home and then I'm able to share it with everyone around the world, whoever cares to watch, you who's watching, thank you, I get to share it with you guys. So it's, it's more of a therapy for me, um, rather than building my brand and building myself. Which actually sparked my topic that I'd like to talk about today, about the ego, and the difference between the ego and self-confidence, and the importance of ego, as well as how the ego can destroy you. Dealing with the self-ego is something that we all endure and are all going through even currently right now, even if you just don't know it. And as much as your ego is a confidence booster and it can help you separate yourself from situations that no longer benefit you and it can give you that extra boost to express yourself and to ascend to your higher being, but at the same time, valuing yourself based on your own idea of yourself can also be extremely destructive. One of my biggest mantras that I have used since I was born millions of years ago um, is don't take anything too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take your life too seriously. Don't take any situation too seriously. A relationship, something someone says about you, the way that the universe teaches you a lesson, don't take anything seriously. There's kind of, there's just no point. At the end of the day, we are all infinite beings and make mistakes and we are all so different and there's just no point in being too serious about your life because that can cause you to stress out, that can cause you to overanalyze and to just be unhappy with yourself. If you're not taking yourself too seriously, then you realize there's room for mistakes and you are always bettering yourself day by day. As we move into this universal shift that we are all currently enduring right now, whether you're at the first level of consciousness or you're ascending to your fourth level of consciousness, we are all dealing with self-realization. Self-realization is a beautiful thing because it allows you to step outside of yourself and look at yourself from a different perspective. I like to do this multiple times a day where I remove myself emotionally from a situation or from what I'm going through or what I'm doing or how I'm acting and I analyze with a detached point of view. So I do not judge myself when I analyze how I'm acting or how I'm feeling. Instead, I just come to realization with it. Hmm, why is it that I'm lashing out in this way? Hmm, why is it that I feel so jealous over this person or over this, how is this making me feel so envious? Or how is, and I like to do this immediately when I feel a, an emotion or I'm going through something that could potentially, you know, phase on to becoming more serious. I like to do it immediately. I remove myself and I'm like, hmm, why do I feel this way? And usually, my point being is, it usually ties into the ego. A lot of us are like, hmm, why am I going through this? I'm way too good to be going through this. I'm embarrassed. I can't believe I'm depressed right now. This is just, I don't know. I don't know my self-worth anymore because I thought I would never be the type of person to go through this type of situation or to have this happen or to be poor or to lose all of my money or to fail at something. That is the ego talking. There is nothing wrong with failing or making mistakes. In fact, it's beautiful. If you make a mistake or you fail in a way, then you are able to better yourself. It basically is just giving you an opportunity to do better, to become something better, to change, reanalyze. And when you're holding on to the ego, you're not able to do that because the ego is the idea that you have of yourself. 
Now the difference between the ego and self-confidence is having confidence means believing in yourself, having faith in yourself, having hope, knowing that you can achieve and you can be and you are worthy. Now that is something you should always carry with you, is self-confidence and the acknowledgement of self and worthiness. Because regardless of who you are or what you're doing or what you've done, you are worthy of being better, of doing better, and of anything that you want. You are deserving. Self-confidence comes from the heart. It's the love that you have for yourself. The ego comes from the mind. And in that, the ego focuses on survival. So it's less about loving from your heart and coming from a place of love, and it's more about trying to survive. So what am I going to do in this situation? How are people going to perceive me? What are they going to think about me? Questions that are relevant but if thought about in the state of the ego, can destroy you. Because you're not thinking clearly, in a sense. You're trying to survive. You're competing. You're acting out of emotion rather than out of contentment and out of self-realization and out of love for yourself and for others. And with the ego, you have a self-determined thought about who or what you are. Therefore, you never want to be wrong. And when you are wrong, it destroys you. Because you have this idea that who you are and what you are is right. That's how the ego thinks. It may not be you thinking that way, but that is how your ego thinks. That little voice in the back of your head that screams at you and that tells you, you cannot be wrong, do not let yourself be wrong, do not let yourself mess up, do not do this, in a sense, it is a good thing because it helps propel you, it helps allow you to have this little sense of competitiveness, which is good for ascending to your higher levels in life, you know, because it's good motivation, but only when it's used at motiva as motivation, only to the certain point that helps propel you and benefits you, and then you begin to think from the heart. Then you begin to act from the heart. But the ego should be only used for a minimal, just a small point and part of any situation within your life. Otherwise, you're going to stay in a competitive state where you are always trying to be better than someone else or than something else, rather than wanting to be better than yourself. And not even being better than yourself, but bettering yourself. And that is how your heart thinks. That is how your heart feels, is you want to better yourself for yourself for the overall benefit of you and your surroundings, rather than the ego, which wants to be the best of the best because that's what it wants and that's what it feels it needs to be worthy. But who really decides and who really deciphers who is or what is the best? Isn't it you? Thinking from the heart, coming from the heart, you and your heart know that you are the best you. You're the best you that you can be. And living from this place allows you to act on that in being the best through your morals, through what you love, through what you care about, in being impeccable with your word, and being wise, loving yourself in all aspects. That is coming from the heart. One of the biggest things I've come to realize along my journey is we are all connected. Now, this is something that I say pretty often. Um, because it is so true and it is so real. Um, our journeys are enlightening journeys as we're awakening. A lot of us tend to feel alone. I get a lot of people reaching out to me recently saying, hey, I feel like I'm waking up, I feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel, but I am stuck in the tunnel and it's dark in here and I'm alone and I don't really know what to do. When you realize that you are truly connected to everything, you can become content and become satisfied within yourself. Now this is actually a very tricky part to ascending to your higher level of consciousness because this is actually where the ego comes into play in a positive way. Realizing that you're connected to everything does not mean that you are like everything that you have to be the same as everyone and you have to have the same expectations, morals, and ideas as everyone. 
The ego helps you to understand that being different is beautiful. Your ego yells at you and tells you, I don't like this. Everyone else seems to like this here, but I don't like this. And so you leave. The ego assists you and helps you to leave. The ego fuels individuality, which is so important to be an individual person in your own life because that is the only way that you can become satisfied within yourself. Now in seeing the ego in this way, you're able to use your ego for self-love in a sense because rather than identifying yourself with your ego and being attached to your ego and this certain idea of yourself, use its powers instead to fuel your individuality and your self-worth, your self-love, which ties into your confidence and which comes from your heart space. A lot of people think that the ego is this terrible, nasty thing that we all need to detach from. If you spend your time trying to detach from your ego, literally trying to detach from your ego, that's what you'll spend your time doing, is trying to detach from your ego. It's not possible to completely lose your ego. It is possible to transform your way of thinking about your ego and transform the way in which you connect with your ego. If you're coming from a place of understanding that you will make mistakes, and that you will be wrong sometimes, but those are only to teach you lessons in life and to make you in return smarter, because hey, we all learn, we all learn the hardest ways. I mean, personally, I do. When I'm proved wrong in a situation, I'm never like, God, you know, damn it, oh my God, what do I do, you know, because that's me worrying about hurting my ego. That's hurting your ego if you're proved wrong in a situation or if you make a mistake. Rather than coming from your ego in those situations come from a place of love and understanding, that's fine. I actually got to learn from that lesson because I was wrong or because I made a mistake. I learned and now I'm even better. So if you sit in this place after you make a mistake, you'll stay in that place. You won't grow. If you detach yourself from your ego and you accept your mistakes and you accept when you're wrong and in return you like it when you make mistakes and when you're wrong because you're able to grow from it, that is when you have developed self-confidence and self-love. Accepting your mistakes and loving your failures allows you to remove your mask, which is your ego. People who wear masks usually wear a mask to hide their emotion or their feeling or their hurt or their failures or their mistakes. The mask, again, is the ego. There is nothing wrong with being emotional, or feeling something, or loving something, or failing at something. The ego is pure fear. It's fear of failure, fear of feeling. And when you're able to release your ego in these types of situations, you understand that when you do have emotion, and you do express your feeling, and you have passion, and you're intense, and you fail, and you mess up, you stay humble. And in being humble, you do no wrong. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Because doing wrong is only self-determined. You are only doing wrong if you believe that you are doing wrong. So rather than putting a label on a mistake or a failure or an emotion or whatever the case may be, release your expectations, release the ego, and release your fear. It is okay to be a human. It is okay to feel. We are all here on planet Earth. It's all about the balance. Yes, we are higher beings ascending to the higher levels of consciousness, but we are also human beings existing on planet Earth right now. So you're supposed to make mistakes and you're supposed to feel things, and you're supposed to be a little crazy sometimes. So how do we release the negative parts of our ego and begin living from our heart space with self-love and self-confidence and only use our ego in terms in which can benefit us? The ego deals with external stimuli. The ego is fueled by the car you drive, the house you have, the person you're dating, how you look, all of the outside forces that people feel determine success or wealth, 
that is the ego. Self-love and self-confidence comes from within. So in order to balance out your ego and release the reins that it may have on you, you need to look within. Close your eyes, look within yourself, and let go. Look inside yourself and release the ideas that society or your parents or your friends or you have constructed in believing that determines you are of worth value. Understand that your current state, who you are within, regardless of what you have or what you look like or what you do or what you say, you are already of worth value. You are already who you're supposed to be. And that person, the person that you are right now, in this very second, is one who is working to ascend to their higher state of being. The best part about the journey of ascending to your higher being is it never stops. You are always working to better yourself and love more and learn more and teach more and share more and feel more. That is the beauty. And once you become self-satisfied, you're free. The ego is something that I have struggled with along my own personal journey. When I was growing up, I was told that I should be the best. That whether I was running a race, playing a sport, or in the spelling bee, I should win. First place is the goal, and I should be the best regardless of whatever I'm doing. Now, that is good to a certain extent. But when I actually started to become the best, was when I decided to look within myself and I understood it's not about being the best to other people or in other people's eyes, it's about being the best in my own eyes. So whether it's something that I have practiced for years and years and put lots of hard work into, whether it's something I'm just starting for the first time today, or whatever the case may be, me beginning that journey is what is satisfying to me. I'm already the best because I have even embarked on that journey. I've had the confidence and I've had the self-love to even begin the process. And that's where you win. It's not about being better than the person next to you. It's about being better than you were five minutes ago. And that's what life is. It's this roller coaster of ups and downs, of being the best, going down, you know, learning your lessons, ascending higher, just like the phoenix. You may burn, but you burn beautifully, and when you arise, you are that much stronger, and you are that much more beautiful. And loving yourself, regardless of your external situation, is pure soul satisfaction. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon.